So we were talking about uh, forbs and weeds and grass and browse, and you've got a few things in your hand here. Explain to us what they are and how they fit into the whole small ruminant yeah. scenario. This one is pretty popular. It's called verbenia, and it's a real pretty little flower, but it has very fine, highly digestible leaves on it, and uh, any small ruminant would readily eat that plant. Uh, here's another one that is familiar to a lot of people, especially if you have allergies. It's good old ragweed. Uh, probably not quite as palatable as the verbena, but they would still certainly eat some of that when it was in a young stage. And then some of our, uh, just our daisies and things like that, they'd probably eat some of these finer finer leaves. They probably would leave the stems, but that's an example of just what's right here that, that uh, would be sought out more by sheep and goats, maybe versus cattle. So why, why is it that the cattle um, don't utilize some of these as well, well as sheep and well goats they do? Well, do, but again, cattle have to have a large volume of forage, you know, and they can get that by eating large amounts of grass, and they have a big mouth, mm -hmm. and they'll use their tongue to, to help, you know, bring that, like a, like a hay harvester almost, mm -hmm. whereas sheep and goats have a very small mouth, and again, they can go out and they can be very selective. And, the, and these, these leaves on here are a little more digestible, as we said, than just some of these old grass stems that would have relatively more undigestible fiber in them. That's not to say, of course, that sheep and goats won't eat, won't eat grass, but mm -hmm. uh, they eat more of a mixture. Some of those may even have some thorns or obstacles right. on them. These acacias, they have a lot of thorns and they'll really get in there and eat those acacia leaves. Um, any of our uh, you know, hackberries, mm -hmm. things like that, they will actively seek out yeah. those those leaves on that on and, that and we were also woody browse. And we were talking about uh, common name cedar, but you know, in all juniper. the publications, it's gonna be juniper. juniper it, it doesn't have thorns. How does it? Why doesn't the, why don't sheep or cattle eat that? And a goat will will use it as a portion of its diet. Well, it has some chemicals in there that uh, not only taste bad, but they they're not the the friendliest thing to the the digestive process. And apparently, goats are a little more able to to cope with those, uh, they call them terpenes, a lot of what we're talking about. And goats, for some reason, are able to cope with that chemical a little bit better than sheep and cattle, mm -hmm. which is to our advantage. So as we were mentioning forbs and grass, and as you can see, if you look close up down here at, at my feet, there is quite a bit of mixture between forbs and grasses out here. So there's a lot of opportunity for, you know, different species of animals to utilize this resource. Obviously, these Forbs, a lot of them won't be here year round. They're going to be seasonal here in the spring, like this globe mallow here is a real pretty little orange forb, and they would actively seek that out. What is targeted grazing, or how would you define targeted grazing? Well, the name's pretty descriptive. Uh, we just pick a, a problem and we try to pick the species of animal that will give us the best control. It, again, it's not mm -hmm. going to be an eradication, but we, we work with, with the animals and the plants mm. that we're trying to, to use and the season of the mm. year, which again, we talked about brimweed being a, a targeted grazing strategy right now might be to put, if you had a pasture that was pretty barren right now and had a lot of broomweed in it, we could, we could put large numbers in there for short periods of time where they would go ahead and consume this and then get them out and let those perennial grasses when they're going to be growing later in the year come in and hopefully there'll be some more moisture available and things mm -hmm. like that. So that, that's the, the right animal at the right, right time for the right numbers. Right numbers. Yep. Yep. Good.